It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today are Melanie Monsteoka and Lisa Yambrick, representing one of my favorite organizations, America's Vet Dogs, which explains why also Liberty is in the studio with me today. Welcome to all of you, including Liberty. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Liberty is... Melanie's uh, five-year-old black Labrador retriever and was placed by America's Vet Dogs with Melanie, who is a veteran, and we'll talk about that in a moment, why you have liberty. Uh, Lisa, we're going to start with you. What is America's Vet Dogs for people that don't know? America's Vet Dogs is an offshoot of the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind, which began after World War II to help uh, returning veterans who had visual impairments. But after the Iraq and Afghanistan conflicts that we were involved in, Guide Dogs saw a real need for service dogs for the returning veterans uh, who were going to have various issues um, you know, for, for, for their duration of their lifetime. And so in 2003, they specifically began training the service dogs for returning veterans. They're trained for different tasks. They're trained for different tasks. A uh, service dog will do retrieval, uh, bracing, and balance for, uh, for veterans who may have amputations and they can't bend over or, or walk freely. They also can provide visual aid. We do have uh, service members who have visual issues. We have hearing dogs for, for veterans who have hearing issues, traumatic brain brain uh, injury alert dogs mm-hmm. who have, if they have people have seizures because of traumatic brain injuries and post traumatic stress relief dogs mm-hmm. um, so people the, the a very major thing is that a lot of injuries are not visible right and so people need to understand that these dogs are trained for everything internal external is- issues that people may have and just because you don't see a, a missing limb or a limp or something does not mean that the veteran is not disabled okay melanie when did you, you served in the navy and thank you for your service thank as you, you know i was also right. a navy yes. uh when did you serve I served from August of 2003 to September of 2013. Okay, and were you stationed all over the world? I was. I spent some time over in Bahrain, about 18 months over there, and then all over the country here, so. And what was your job? I was a medical service corps officer, healthcare administrator. When did you get out? In 2013. And why did you get out? I was medically retired. I had started having uh, strokes in 2007, another one in 2012, and had some physical injuries as well, so. Do you mind me asking your no. age? No, oh, I'm I'm 39. Okay, two more months. <laughs> so a lot of times when people hear the word stroke, maybe some people might think age. Yes. No, I was 29. Um, very very fit. I had been an athlete, um, competitive athlete, and. Um, it was a kind of a shock. So driving home from work one day, just <laughs> out of the blue. So, and the Navy did a good job of taking care of you. They they did. Yeah, um, I had also been diagnosed, ironically, the same day with a heart condition, mm. um, and they had just treated me for that. And then driving home, I had the first stroke, and then another one later that evening, um, and have had several smaller ones since then. Is there anything you can do to? Not yeah. really. They haven't really figured out the cause of it, so um, it's just kind of one of those things where you. Does your tell me what a stroke is? What happens? So it's a brain injury, um, different than a traumatic brain injury. It's an, what they call an acquired brain injury. Um, and so this was acquired. Yeah, they don't know why. I don't. We're still not sure why I have the problem. So they just labeled it stroke syndrome. But basically, a part of your brain dies. Um, I have blood basically that kind of clots in the in the vessels of my brain, and then that tissue dies. So it's it creates some similar effects to traumatic brain injury, but it is a different type of brain injury. So. So you'll keep having these strokes for? It's possible, yeah. So I've had, like I said, several smaller ones. Um, no, thank goodness, no other big ones since that day in 2007. But, um, but yeah, it's it's something that you just live with. You just. Well, that's a, a, a scary thing to live with. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, and that's partly why I ended up with Liberty. So the first time you had this happen, I was driving home from work, which is yeah, scary. Which is scary. Yes. <laughs> um, my the the right side of my face started. I could feel it drooping um, and I was trying to talk on the phone with my mom and couldn't speak any longer it was just muffled sounds coming out Um, and so I immediately as soon as I could pulled over uh, and it kind of passed quickly that was a very small one that I had. Did you call (laughs) 911? No. (laughs) 
spoken <laughs> like a true woman and a veteran. <laughs> yeah, I'm just having a stroke, no worries. My, yeah, my mom, who was a firefighter at EMT, knew what was happening, and she kept yelling at me to go back to the, because I worked at the hospital. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So I just left to the hospital, and uh, and she was telling me to go back, but I I just could, I mean I was 29 and I was extremely healthy I thought, and so uh, so I couldn't believe that that had really been what happened to me. So I just kind of wrote it off to stress or blood sugar was low or something. <laughs> so I went home and I ate and I showered and I <laughs> and, and everything felt and, better. And, and, yeah, and I was fine. And uh, and then I spoke to one of my friends who was a doctor and she said, well, it was probably nothing, but just I recommend going back. So I did. And while I was sitting in the ER waiting to be seen, I had the bigger one. Um, so oh, thank, it was, thankfully you were in the ER at that time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, so that was kind of an interesting evening, but <laughs> I would say, all right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back more about Melanie, America's vet dogs, Liberty, and what Lisa has to say about all this. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Melanie Mons de Oca and Lisa Yambrick, as well as Liberty, who is uh, Melanie's five-year-old, beautiful black Labrador retriever. She's a service dog. She's, She's a service dog, yes. Okay. Melanie was just telling us about her strokes that she has had. Uh, she repeats strokes. They will keep coming, uh, hopefully not as often, hopefully not at all, but they <laughs> have happened. Uh, and she was driving the first time this happened and like... Uh, most of us women just blew it off and just kept going <laughs> even though she's a medical professional with the US Navy yes. but that's what we women sometimes do exactly uh, <laughs> all right so America's vet dogs yes. tell me how you got acquainted with them and then now Liberty so I had heard of them um, when I was still active duty. I was working um, as a Navy liaison at the um, Poly Trauma Center down at the VA in Tampa uh -huh. and um, had heard of various service dog organizations. And I had looked into several um, as I was being medically retired and came across vet dogs. And they are one of the, well, the only one I really could find, um, but one of the few out there, I'm sure, that works with veterans from any era. Um, with any type of injury. And because my injuries were not combat related, it was very hard. I had reached out to a few other organizations and they really were not able to help me because their mission was to to focus on the combat veterans. And so, so I found Vet Dogs and I put in an application and uh, within a couple of weeks, they were responding back and the rest is history. <laughs> and, well, so. and that's important. America's Vet Dogs, is uh, with America in the title, you should know yes. by now, it is a nationwide organization mm -hmm. and are servicing veterans nationwide. What is involved with the process, Lisa? Somebody makes an application, as Melanie just said. Yes. Uh, as she said, let, let me amplify this point. This is for veterans of all eras. Your injuries do not have to be combat related, as Melanie has pointed out. And also, uh, first responders are able to apply. So police and fire, like post 9-11, any era uh, are able to respond. We have um, veterans from World War II who have received dogs, who are still uh, living independent lives with their dogs, the Korean War. But um, a veteran will make an application for a, a dog. Go to the website, um, which is vetdogs.org. Uh -huh. And um, you have to and, submit a DD-214, I assume. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what you have to submit, but I know, uh, so you, you put the application in online and then they respond back to you and tell you what other documents you need to submit after that. But they review the initial application and then you get a, you know some information from your medical provider as well as I'm sure I had to submit a DD-214 right. and then they, they evaluate everything and um, determine whether or not they feel that they would be able to provide a dog that would be able to assist you and then you go on a waiting list and uh, for me, fortunately, back then, because um, I've had Liberty almost four years now, the waiting list was fairly short mm -hmm. for, for my needs. I only waited three months. Some veterans in my class had waited up to two years, so it just depends on the what dogs are available and um, what the needs of the veteran are. And the dogs are raised by somebody else for the first year of their life, yes? Yes, uh, we have both volunteer puppy raisers mm -hmm. throughout the nation. Uh, who primarily raise dogs for the guide dog side of it. Right. And we also 
also have a puppy prison program of a, a network of prisons. They are primarily a feeder for the vet dog puppies. The puppies stay with an inmate mm -hmm. uh, during the week, and then on a weekend, a local family will take the puppy out to get experiences that they can't get, obviously, right. uh, inside the prison. They'll go to the theater, to the grocery store, on escalators, you know, public transportation. Uh, it's been a very, very successful program on both sides of, of the aisle, if you will. I mean, it's it's wonderful for for the inmates to have this opportunity for a touch of humanity, and then also uh, it's great for vet dogs to have this service. Absolutely, and you, you do need volunteers to help with the raising of the puppies. Yes, always okay. looking for volunteers for All that, right. yes. Melanie, is there something Liberty does that can help you with your strokes or medical condition, or is there? Yeah, what, how so, so what I initially looked into getting a dog for was um, to get help for me if something happened. So I had had a number of incidents, and I also suffer from severe migraines, and this symptoms um, are very close to the stroke symptoms. So I have a very difficult time telling what is happening. And, and I was basically in the ER every seven to 10 days for something, whether it was a migraine or another mini stroke. And so I initially got her because I was living alone and I had developed a lot of anxiety about being home alone and having something happen. So she is trained to either bring me a phone mm -hmm. um, to call for, for help. Um, if somebody else is around, she can go get a person and bring them back to me. And she was also trained, which I don't have this right now, but she was trained to uh, push a button that could also dial the 911 system. Awesome. So if I'm not conscious or able to to help, you know, get help for myself, she can do that for me. She was also trained to do a lot of other things. So I have a lot of a lot of my symptoms from the strokes kind of are similar to the TBI symptoms. Like I said, I get dizzy. So she's trained to help me with mobility. So I have a, a vest that has a strap on it when I'm having a bad day, and I can use that to kind of counterbalance myself in case I, you know, feel like I'm going to fall. She's trained to help me get up off the floor, which I have taken falls. She's trained to come over and she'll brace her body so that I can use her to help push myself up back off the ground or out of a low chair or something like that. Because I do have physical injuries as well. I have, um, you know, had multiple hip surgeries and, and back issues and whatnot. So, um, so she's, she, she's got a whole lot of she things. She has a laundry resume, list of yeah. things to do. Yeah. If I'm having a bad migraine, she can actually, you know, I can get in bed and she can go turn on and off lights for me if I need her to. She'll remind you to take if, medications. If you could put a percent on how much she has improved your life from zero oh, to 100 percent uh -huh. At close to 100%, if not 100%. Um, I was not able to work when I got her. I had been not able to work for about two years at that point. I was probably very deep in depression, even though I was in denial about that. <laughs> um, had extreme anxiety, was on a ton of medications, and like I said, in and out of the, the hospital every seven to 10 days on average. And since I've had her in the four years, I've gone almost off almost all medications. Um, I just take the ones that are necessary to keep my blood thinner and things like that for the heart, for the stroke. Well, that's an um, amazing story. Yeah, off all kinds of like depression or anxiety medications, sleep you. medications. Mm -hmm. She just makes you get up and move, so physically I feel much better than I did before. I don't take any pain meds or anything like I That's used to. Amazing. So we're going to take yeah. a short and when we come back more about what you can do to make sure this keeps happening for mm -hmm. our veterans and first responders. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today are Melanie Monts de Oca and Lisa Yambrick talking about America's vet dogs and Liberty, who happens to be an America's vet dog. Both Melanie and Lisa are from the Anne Arundel County area, which brings me to my next point. The eighth annual Annapolis Kent Island Run and Dog Walk is being held Sunday, April 22nd, 2018. The event leaves from Kent Island High School. It's directly across the bridge. It's not hard to get to, and it's beautiful. It tours the Cross Island Trail. Participants can choose to run in a 10K or 5K timed race or take a two-mile uh, family-friendly walk with or without their pup. All proceeds are assisting America's Vet Dogs mission to help veterans with disabilities live a life without boundaries. You just heard from Melanie about what her dog has done for her. She's off medication now. Her trips to the emergency room have been lessened. Uh, Liberty has improved her life close to 100%, if not over 100%. And there are more people like Melanie out there who are receiving these dogs, and these dogs are improving their lives. Tell me how 
how important it is for people to attend events like this and to give back to America's vet dogs. So it keeps enabling this. Oh, it's absolutely critical uh, for, for two reasons. First of all, America's Vet Dogs is a nonprofit organization. This is not a government organization that gets funding from the VA or anything of that nature. We're ent entirely reliant on contributions, sponsorships, uh, corporate sponsorships, events like this, people you know, participating. And the second reason it's so important is because the veterans pay absolutely nothing for this life-changing service. These dogs are completely free of charge for the veteran. The veterans are flown to our campus on New York for their training with the dogs for, for two weeks, is it, Melanie? Two, two weeks, weeks yes. yeah. There's no charge to them. They have aftercare if the dog needs follow-ups. It's just an amazing service because there are other organizations that do charge veterans and people really can't always afford it. So this is a, a life-changing thing. What we do at our eighth annual America's Vet Dogs Run and Dog Walk is have you come on out. You can run and walk, as, uh, as uh, Donna mentioned. We have some dog-friendly vendors there with some dog treats and toys and various uh, services that you can enjoy. You can register at race4, the number four, vets.vetdogs.org. Uh, you'll get a t-shirt. It's just a wonderful day to come out. And uh, even if you don't feel like running, you can just hang out with vet dogs and lots of other dogs, and we just have a wonderful time. The, the United States Naval Academy Color Guard comes out for us and presents uh, the colors. We have a retired uh, Army Master Sergeant from the Army Voices Band who sings a national anthem for us. It's just a wonderful event. It really is a fun day. Melanie, you've been there before. Yes, You're yes. doing it again this year? I am, yeah. yeah. We actually, I moved to this area because I started coming to these races and, and fell in love with the area. One other point that I have to ask both of you, because this has been in the news lately, should there be some sort of legislation in Maryland to avoid the... You're going to put it on me, Lisa? Yeah. Then. Melanie, um, you have a service dog yeah. that's needed for... I, I see both sides. I've, I've heard both arguments. Uh, for me, yes, I feel there should be um, a, either a state or federal legislation to regulate service dogs. Um, it, we have been in situations where people have brought their personal pets in, slapped a vest on it that they bought off of Amazon, and Liberty has been nearly bitten. And some dogs are forced to retire when that happens because they, they develop. I have a, well, Kent actually <laughs> um, had that happen where, you know, his dog got so nervous about being around other dogs because it was attacked from a, a legitimate service dog oh. um, and that and that's for somebody like us that rely on these dogs it's nice to be able to take your pet with you I understand that and it does make people feel happier but for some of us these are you know life-changing and kind of critical things for us to be able to function and so to take that away from us <laughs> is really you know it puts us back 10 steps to where we were it's hard to think of these beautiful wonderful dogs this way but we have to think of them as medical instruments right in, in some ways they are critical for the well-being of the veteran who has them. And so you wouldn't not allow a person on a plane with without their insulin, for example, if they mm -hmm. needed that. Dog is the same way. It absolutely has to be um, be with, with the veteran. And so people who are taking advantage of a, of a situation where they can bring a personal pet, it's simply not right. Yeah, and, and I think people need to understand the differences between the emotional service, uh, you know, or emotional support dogs, the service dogs, and the therapy dogs, and that's, you know, where legislation could help. So, mm -hmm. Thank you both very much for joining me today. One more time on the website. Uh, vetdogs.org is the America's Vet Dogs website. To register for the run, you can go to race4, the number 4, vets dot vetdogs.org. Again, that's held Sunday, April 22nd, 2018. This is the eighth time it's being held, the annual Annapolis Kent Island Run and Dog Walk. You can walk, you can bring your dogs, you can bring a goat. And I have seen, <laughs> actually, I've seen goats there. That's right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there were. <laughs> Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will see you next week.